Well, before we go too far in, I wanted just to say happy birthday. I know last weekend we wanted oh, to try and oh get gosh. this thing on the road and you were busy celebrating. So uh, how does it feel to be 40? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to be forcing. Um, creaky. <laughs> uh, what am I supposed uh, yeah. to say? I'm 10 years ahead of you, so I'm like... Uh... Oh, man. It's, 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 it's beautiful stuff. It's, it's cool. It was really good. And, you know, because it was nice to actually have a weekend where I did start, did like fun stuff. Because usually it's just, well, not, not that I don't do fun stuff, but, you know, I did stuff with my friends and family and, and things. So we went... It was really cool. Went to this virtual reality place. I've never done virtual reality before, and um, shot zombies and stuff. And oh, yeah, it was cool. all good, all good fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It was good. It was good fun. Really, really good. And then spent the rest of the rest of the day literally like on Google. How much is a virtual reality headset? And <laughs> <laughs> I'll never so, get time to use. So, did you get spoiled with the gifts, uh, or or did, was it low key? Well, it's it's, pre it's pretty low key, you know. I I didn't. I mean, in all fairness, I didn't want. I wasn't going to do anything. Um, I love celebrating other people's birthdays, but my own, I kind of keep on the down low. Um, I got I got lots of, lots of Back to the Future stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. And um, what was the other thing? I got actually got these AirPod thingy um, yeah, things, which is really they're, they're, nice you know the Apple headphone things. They're really good. Oh yeah. Um, those have the, yeah, just, those have the noise cancelling on them if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, man, really good. And I got um, George, who um, I think you, you know, he he got Monty. He got me one of those um, Empress Effect Zoya pedals. Oh, very nice. Which oh man, that's so good. It's literally it's it's the ultimate noise making machine. It's <laughs> it's just my I, I I watched a video on it. Um, to, on how it's how to use it and just to setting a reverb up and this this video is an hour long <laughs> <laughs> so you're not going to get tired of it anytime soon <laughs> no man I, I i honestly think that you couldn't unless you were you know as long, anybody with any imagination you couldn't you couldn't get tired of it it's so it's so cool well um, that's a yeah. that's a nice gift uh, my birthday's coming up in october and uh you know I'm probably gonna get some socks, so <laughs> so you're you're getting way better gifts than I'm gonna get. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> that, yeah, no, I mean, you know it's a uh, it's been a it's been a bumper year, but you know so that's yeah. good. I'm I'm pleased with that one. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Twenty twenty, if we could make it uh, better than it is, we should definitely try because uh, it's been a bummer so far. But uh, whatever. Oh, man, tell me that. It's all good. <laughs> So, so how's business? How are things in the uh, the guitar world? Uh, I see that you're you're pretty busy making videos and putting stuff on Instagram, and I see that you yeah. have a lot of products now on your web page. Uh, you know, for those of the, the the people watching that don't know, I mean, I was introduced to um, to uh, uh, Matt's pickups, his great pickups, uh, like five years ago now. It seems like yesterday. Yeah. Um, when I tried out a, a set of uh, the PAFs that you wound, and, mm. uh, you know, five years later, I'm still raving about them. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I think they're great. Um, actually, I, I'm gonna see if I can get a, a, another set, uh, purchase a set from you for a, a PRS guitar that I have. Okay. I have this um, this PRS SC two four five. Sorry, CE two four five. I have both actually. Um, mm. And it's a great guitar. It's a beautiful instrument, but I never bonded with the pickups, you know. And every time I play yeah. the Gibson that I put your pickups in, I'm like, yeah, this is the sound, you know. It's kind of you ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've never been happier to ruin something for somebody. <laughs> no, it's super great. I mean, every time somebody uh, on the channel asks about pickups and like, you know, what pickups would be good, I'm like. Just you know, check out Monty's guitars. Check, ring up Matt and ask him to uh, to wind you a set of the PAFs. You can't go wrong. I mean, uh, uh, they're, they're really great. Thank you. They're really great, <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. I mean, that that video that I made, I think now it's fourteen thousand views in. So uh, wow. I think a lot of people definitely agree with with my take on it. Yeah. yeah. So I said it over and over again. The, the pickups do. For me, the pickups uh, definitely shine in the front pickup, especially. I mean, they're they're great as a set, but mm. the the neck pickup for some reason is always hard. for me. I find is always um, very uh, difficult to find a set that sounds good, 
both in the neck and the bridge. And I always mm. find the neck pickup always a little bit too muddy. The note separation mm -hmm. is not quite there. It's always maybe too bassy. I always have mm. a really hard time with it. But your your pickups are not like that, and I, I, they sound great. And the, 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 that's how I determine a great set is if it sounds yeah. good in the neck position, uh, you know, I'm sold. So, you know, yeah. how, how did you um, just give me an idea of how you kind of uh, set off on the path to to make those pickups? Was it kind of like you just wanted to emulate stuff that you already heard, or were you really after something different? Um, I mean, originally, I, you know, because the, the the path ones that you've you've got, they came sort of. I didn't start out trying to make those. I mean, originally, I started making. I think it's well, the first set I made was what is now our they called the uh, Full Monty humbuckers. They were called the GT five hundreds because. Um, it was named after my favorite car of all time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 1967 Shelby Mustang. One day I'll get one. <laughs> but um, yeah, I tried to I, pick up generally. Well, get the whole guitar thing. I I found it really tricky to sit in a in a mix when you're playing with a band. But the, you know, when I for the last sort of I've stopped now, but for about 12 years i was playing in a, a function band with we were using lots of track we there was keyboards bass multiple vocals electric drums and all that kind of thing and it's very easy to get lost in the mix when you're trying to especially at low volumes and things which we're all um, um being lumbered with now um so it's, it's always about frequency and having the right frequencies to sit so you don't need to just you you don't just crank up your amp or to to be heard. You can actually you you kind of shine through, um, and it was always about doing that. I mean, and that the full Monty set, for example, I needed at the time I was using a the Catelli I built, which had a it was an HSH set in it, and um, I needed it to do everything from you know wham to van halen basically so it's make it super super versatile um and be able to to crank it when i needed to and that was that was that but i mean i've always loved the the guitars that kind of had that single coil kind of clarity to them you know so i mean i was very very fortunate back in the day when i started um at a guitar shop called chandler's in Q, which is sort of west london um we had everybody coming through there so all the weird and wonderful vintage things uh we had like the the, the dave gilmore's black strap the the gold one that he i don't know if he still has it but the zero 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 one or whatever it was we had you know mark knopfler lived in the area and he would come in we had the stones you know it's pete townsend literally who's who um so i landed right on my feet and was with possibly the best, arguably the best luthiers in the country at that, at that point. Um, and I, so I got to see all this stuff and was shown, yeah, I, I got to see the best of the best and also the best of the worst, you know what I mean? It was, it was that kind of thing. And every guitar that spoke to me um, to be all hippie about it was one, they, they all had the same frequencies. It was kind of this, basically a, te basically a Telecaster. <laughs> I get it. it. Sounds like a Telecaster. I'm in, and uh, and that was it. And all like the the paths for they there's so many different types. There's so because they they weren't wound. They weren't as back then. The machinery uh, wasn't as accurate as it is. You know, we can do now. I mean, even with my sort of a homemade pickup winder, I've got digital counters and stuff. The the machine they were winding the paths on that was some of the gearing was even cardboard so it would fail and lots of the time they were winding to time not to that so you get all these different things and if you get and some of them just work they're magic you know so sorry i went off on a bit of a tangent there but um yeah it's a frequency thing <laughs> i mean I've, I've been obsessed with guitar since i was five and saw back to the future <laughs> right. so it's like a, it's deep embedded in my in embedded in my soul really but i mean it still does get the 
it's 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 kind of it's it's kind of normal for me i mean i've been working in the guitar industry for like over 20 years now so and before that i was at guitar college and before that i was at um a music school and so it's always been part of my life i mean i don't i very rarely actually play guitar weirdly now um i work work with them all day and um but I, you know, when I'm fi- when I'm fixing them, when, when we do the repair side of things, and you know, and the res- restorations, even building them, it's kind of you just have to keep it moving. You know, get one, fix it, test it, if you know, um, and and then move it on. And that's actually weirdly on that point. That's when you know you've got there's an amazing guitar because you'll test it, and then you'll end up you know two hours has gone by and then I beat myself up because I haven't got the rest of the rest of my work done I've done that but yeah <laughs> it's 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 easily done but I it's like with with any job I mean there's going to be times where I don't enjoy it or you know it's, there's stresses and strains but with anything you just gotta you know just take a breath and carry on but I think especially when from when you're building building a brand, building a business, um, there's so much to do. There's so much, the, I mean, I could literally work and I you know, pretty much do work 24 seven, you know, yeah. and there's constantly things to learn. And like with, like with guitar, it's literally just, you know, making different sounds, making, finding new licks, listening to other players. I mean, there's so many people, um, doing doing loads of things you can just you can you always learn and that's i think that's key to everything really it's just as long as you don't stop learning it's or you know it then if you stop learning everything goes a bit dull and stale you know absolutely that's the key is to move forward all the time what what yeah. uh, what are you excited about? I mean, I know you you have a, quite a, a an extensive lineup of pickups. I was looking at your website uh, since the last time, and I see that now you have a whole bunch of different series on your website as well. Yeah, what's got you excited? I mean, which ones are you the most uh, proud of, or you know, excited about? Um, we've got ones that on they're not on the site yet, but early. Epiphones uh, before Gibson started making pickup mini humbuckers for them. They used a pickup that was lovingly no, known as the New Yorker, which is basically it's a big fat bar magnet with the wire wrapped directly onto that. Um, and I worked with a guitar builder over here, uh, a guy called Clive Brown, um, who makes amazing sort of like uh, explorers and that kind of thing. And um, he had some of these pickups, but they were busted, um, and he wanted them re- wanted them rewound, and um, we had to figure out how to do it. And there's an article like no nobody's been able to do it, or that I've heard of. And there's an article with Jason Lawler saying that it's they're impossible to do, um, and we figured it out. <laughs> awesome. So that was really really cool, and they sound they they sound really gnarly. They're just the a proper just stick it in the bridge and, and that and like an 18 watt marshal when you're set do you know what i mean it's they're really really cool and um we just get i've got the wine sorted out i've got the magnet sorted out now i just need to get the uh, covers because originally the covers for, for those were like bent sheet metal and then they were jammed into these weird surrounds so it's figuring out how to make that work for modern day application um and that's yeah, that's got me really excited because it's it's something, yeah, it's something I was told that I wouldn't be able to do, and I've done it. I, always, uh, I love doing that, you know. A challenge. Yeah, Man exactly. Who loves a challenge. Exactly. I love I love that. That's going to be really cool. We've got. Um, I bought at the beginning of lockdown. I bought myself uh, a three D printer, which has kind of opened all doors to being able to do this kind of thing. Um, Everyone thought it was me just wanting something to play with, but which, to be honest, it was. Um, but it, it, it's me- it's it's it means that we can make I can make I've made like jigs and all this stuff, so we can produce the pickups with you know with um, better quality, quicker, um, all that kind of thing. It's amazing 
how to embrace this new tech to then use it on oh, you know old tech it's really it's really cool to see absolutely so, I've, I've had the luxury of playing with the printers too I, we had them at work and yeah it's amazing what you can do with them now and yeah. why not embrace the technology when it's available if it makes it better and easier why not uh, exactly but speaking of technology do you think pickups are going to evolve i mean the, the you know the, the overall a pickup hasn't really changed over so many years it's you know yeah no. we've come with come up with you know uh noiseless pickups and and active pickups but overall mm. i mean the pickup is generally stayed pretty much the same after so many years do you do you foresee anything else coming over the horizon with pickups i don't know. I, I don't know i mean uh well fishman have done that uh, what are they called? I can't remember the then their new pickup, which is kind of two pickups in one yeah. with like three D printed boards inside them and stuff. Which I, you know, as I think as a concept is really good. They've got they they do sound they do sound good, um, and you know, bang for buck, give people great tones. But the one thing, and I'm guilty of this myself, is guitarists want everything exactly how it was in the 50s just without the syphilis do you know what i mean it's just exactly. it's that uh, it's yeah it's it's still like it was why you know everyone lusts after well not everybody but people lust after bursts and 50s 60s strats and that kind of thing um we all seem to want it i don't know why i know and it's true very rarely do people come up with new things that then break it i mean if you look at when prs did it there was um, the Parker Fly that, I mean, I actually really like those um, bonkers ideas and stuff and really, really cool. It looks like a Klingon battleship, exactly. but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, and I found this out, I you know, found this with, with the stuff that we make, anything that's familiar to someone like the path, for example, they know they've got an image in there the tonal imprint in yeah. the head of what that's going to be. I mean, bluntly, it's easier, it's easier to, to sort of, to, to sell something like that than it is the stuff that are my own recipes that actually I've worked on for way longer than I did, you know, than, than the path, the path really. And it's my, it's how I see, how, how I feel I can improve the pickups, like Telecaster sets, for example. I always found the neck pickups, it's really tricky on a telly to get that to cut through. Um, they can sound a bit woolly, um, usually because they're, they're wound with, well, typically they were wound with thinner wire, so it's 43 gauge um, rather than 42, which most, most stuff is. So you get more resistance, but less output. And so to do that, I changed, you know, a retro wind set, for example, that's round with the thick, slightly thicker wire. Um, and the bobbin's a little bit taller and like loads of things to make it sound, make it cut through. And, but only now after being go, going for, you know, this is my 10th year officially as Monty's, um, are people starting to trust that it's, it's this trust thing. Do you know what I mean? And it's, I remember listening to a podcast with Brian Wampler and he said, it's, you know, it's why most pedal manufacturers make a tube screamer. And all stuff that people are familiar with, because then you can, they start to trust you because they, they've got like a benchmark of what it's like. He makes a really good one of these. Right. And then maybe, he, maybe, maybe I can trust him with, with this. <laughs> with something thing. else. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'd want to say, yeah, I think there may be some, some other things to do in like, the pickup world, but fundamentally, it's just turning the how can we turn the physical movement of the string into the best sounding start of the electrical signal it's how do we do that and if we can find a really funky way of doing it um that doesn't cost the earth then and it does it really well then that's that's really cool i think i i, I tend to agree with you i was having this conversation with someone else just recently and i think you hit the nail on the head when you said like as musicians, you know, everything we do is sort of emulating other people. You know, when you start playing a guitar, you want to sound like Jimmy Page or you want to sound like 
Hendrix or mm. Van Halen or whatever. So you're always after emulating a sound that's been done previously. So when you're yeah. looking at uh, instruments and uh, pickups and pedals and all that kind of stuff, we kind of do want to stay the same because we don't want to deviate from that sound too much because then it's like, I'm never going to be able to sound like him if I go off in a, in a more modern type of you know technology or something. So we kind of do want new stuff, but we want it to kind of reflect the past. So it's kind of, yeah. we're kind of weird that way, you know, and it, it's the same yeah. for, for amplifiers. People want to have new technology, but then when you present a transistor type app, it's like, no, it's got to be tube. If it's not tube, mm. it's not the real recipe or, you know, I'm missing something. So we're kind of strange yeah. that way, but uh, it's just the way it is. So I totally understand. You have to catch their attention with something that's familiar and then, you know, hopefully build that trust where they're going to say, okay, let's try, you know, that pickup was yeah. really great. Let's try a set of these Telecaster pickups with P90 and see if they're just yeah, good, yeah. you know. Exactly. Uh, it's it been with, 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 I think, with business just generally. It is, it's, it's all about relationship building. and Absolutely. And proving that you know what you're talking about and you make good stuff. And if you make good stuff continually and try and do your best all the time, then that's, that's, that's all you can do, you know, I think. So are, are, are certain pickups harder to make than others? Like, you know, obviously a humbucker has, you know, two coils and it's different than a single coil pickup, but like, you know, a P90, for example, you know, how, how much of a, a, a different um, strategy do you take when you, wind one type over another type i mean is it similar is there overlap or do you start off sort of completely different with something like that um they're all pretty similar when on the from the winding point of view the um humbuckers and p90s are, are a bit e easier weirdly they've got more parts to them but they're a bit easier because the bobbins are you know they're, they're pre-made the tricky things is like the fender style when you you've got to make sure that whatever you're using to put them together is solid um i mean now as i said i've got this 3d printer thing so i i print jigs they look like sort of big bars of soap not too dissimilar to this but like bigger and we put the bobbin the flat work in the middle so it's sandwiches sort of hovering in the middle and then they've got holes down the, down the, the center and we literally put a stop on the, on our press, but so we can push the magnets into the certain to their certain depths. Um, so it's that now, before that process was way more complicated. You had so that you had to first of all get the flat work. You have to ream. You have to well, you still have to ream it out, shape the shape the ready to accept the accept the magnets, and then press it into the bottom. And put spaces on the top, put the top down. Um, oh, and bevel the magnets, do all that kind of stuff, uh, and then hope that it doesn't warp. And then you have to glue them all and lacquer dip them, and then you wind them. Do you yeah. see what I mean? So there's like all strap. You look at a strap for when you get it in the box, and you think, oh, there's nothing really to that. Right. But then, even just to get to the winding process, you've got all these other things you've got to do just to get there. And and also one thing that people don't realize is it's filthy. The <laughs> amount of times you literally that stuff, it's so horrible. The bourbon, it just your hand, you look you, you look like you've been mining. <laughs> I believe you, I believe you. I, I haven't actually ever tried winding my own pickups because I just figured just to get up and running with something like that, it would cost a fortune just to buy the parts that you need and everything that you need. So I, I'd rather just leave it to the pros and just uh, leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, what did I start on? I started, when I started repair, doing the repairs for myself, my, my grandmother unfortunately passed away and left me with, she gave all of, all of my cousins and I uh, 2,000 pounds when we hit 21. And um, so I hit 21 and I spent it all at Stuart McDonald. Right. Um, <laughs> and got all of the tools. And I still use most of them today. The only ones that I don't use are the nut files because they broke. Oh. But, um, you know, so that that set me up. And, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even know how much just that, that investment has, has helped me. And then with the, the pickup building, is you can actually start it relatively cheaply. Um, I mean, I, I sold, I still kind of regret it, but I sold my motorbike to then give me a couple of months so I could buy enough wire and stuff and then then 
and, and magnets and things and, and lock myself away in a garage and try and learn it. But the winder I built myself um, and I built all the timer and everything myself. And then, yeah, I just sat in this cold garage it's through a couple of winters. Oh God, it was horrible. But um, <laughs> teaching myself how to wind. You just got, I, mean, I think it's the same with anything. You've got to jump in, yeah. jump, you know, I've don't always over, been a... Don't overthink it. Just do it. Yeah. You can... What's... Uh, paralysis by analysis exactly. is a phrase that gets banged bang, bang around. I mean, sometimes you have to think... You should think things through, obviously. But I'm... I'm very... I'm very impatient when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I don't... I, I don't learn by reading. I've never been any good at school. I was terrible. Um <laughs> I have to do something physically, right? And uh, and and then it just locks in, and it makes it makes sense. So I like I can I can fix stuff and figure out how things work relatively easily. But give me a book and with some facts and stuff, and I I just that will just fall out. I get know. that. I'll be able to tell you when I'm reading it, but <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Just, it, the only thing that sticks is what you use. So that's that's the important thing. Exactly. What kind of what kind of a rush do you get when you when you hear somebody you know playing your pickups or somebody you know famous or out there is is using your pickups and you know that must be kind of a rush. To, to... Yeah, I mean, do you know what? I mean, I still get a rush every time we get an order. It's it I, it feels banana. It's like absolutely bonkers that people trust the the stuff that we do and you know it's it's now it's not just me i mean that's the other thing i the fact that i have employees and i have to do like wages and all that kind of stuff that's bonkers <laughs> but the biggest thing it's so actually before when we were or just before you came back in after rebooting um i just i was i looked at like facebook messages um i usually only do it once a day but i was just like pal let's do it again and there was a guy who had bought one of they just bought a shirt a yeah, t-shirt that and he'd taken a picture of himself with it on you know and that's that's crazy because it's you know it's a t-shirt that i've designed and this guy is now you know there's a, a bloke who do, i don't know has got one <laughs> exactly um, exactly yeah 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 it, it's amazing it's, yeah. it, I mean, for me as a, as a YouTuber and stuff, I, I the only reason I do this is because I love it. I love uh, yeah. interacting with people that love the same thing I do. And that's why I enjoy uh -huh. talking to you and other people as well. And uh, it's surprising to me as well just to know that other people you want to wanna listen to what I have to say and actually looking forward to, you know, my live shows on Sunday and stuff where, you know, we just talk about everything in general in terms of music yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But there's people that actually, you know, look forward to it. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's like, this is amazing. It's got, it's gone through uh, doing stuff that I like to do for me to now mm. other people looking forward to doing that stuff with me, which is great. You know? Yeah, that, that's, that, that is brilliant. But I think what you, it's, if you, if, if you do, if you, if you're lucky enough to do something that you really enjoy or you're passionate and you're passionate about it, that comes through, you know, Absolutely. and then, and people, you're not going to want to. You're not going to want to watch and sit down and watch somebody, you know, talk about it. it's like, oh god, this is another guitar, and it's like, oh, exactly. oh, oh. you know, you know, and that comes across. And yep. and but but I know exactly what you mean. Is when somebody, you you know that somebody's kind of seen, like watched your stuff. So I I do I do a podcast with a friend of mine, a guy called Steve Crow, who had does Audio Kitchen apps, which if you haven't, you should check out. They're really cool. Um, and we do this podcast called What Goes On, uh, talking to techs, musicians. Um, we did uh, we did an actor, like a legitimate Hollywood actor called Yul Vasquez. He's done been in like loads of stuff. He's in The Sopranos, which is really cool. But you know, just talking about, but it's not about um, you know if they've got something to promote or work, like that yeah. kind of thing. It's literally about their journey from when they started yeah. to all the way through, and it's. It's really, I, look, they had this guy who's helping us out with our Facebook stuff and he came in and he had listened to every single one of them. And they're all, they're like, some of them are like two hours long. It's literally, we don't edit anything. And that was, that felt really 
it was really cool, but felt really weird. And he's like, know. he felt like he knew, he'd never met Steve. He'd yeah. met me once before, but he felt he knew us both. Exactly. And was talking to us about stuff. It, you know, it's like my Back to the Future obsession and, you know, the things that I like, you know, like I'm massively into things like tennis and pickup trucks and all that kind of stuff, which is just weird that other people that I don't really know, know all this like right. stuff about me that I've quite happily spouted onto the internet. Absolutely. <laughs> Very weird. It's a, it's a question of connection, you know, and I think it's true what you're saying. Uh, you know, a lot of people that are uh, out there doing a YouTube thing are not necessarily trying to. And those yeah. are the people that I feel are, are more successful because they, they connect on a, a whole different level. It's not like yeah. I'm trying to make you buy something. It's like, I like this thing and I want to tell you about it. Whether you want yeah, to yeah, buy, yeah. buy it or not, that's your business. But I mean, it's not a question of, you know, buy, buy, buy. So, yeah. you know, when I see people like you doing what they do, it's great because, uh, oh, there's a little, your little girl, I think, behind you there. Oh, yeah, this is my daughter, this is me. It's my wife, Laura. Hi hey, this there. is Tony. You want to say hello? <laughs> Hi there. How are you? <laughs> She's just been to the toy shop. Oh, you got some toys. Fantastic. Lucky. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. so lucky. <laughs> I'm sure that. she's going to have a great time playing with the toys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but that's that is that is key. You've got to do it. Just you, you're fine. You just got to keep doing doing what you do, and it's just like I'm not doing it to to create. It. Well, obviously, a business has to make money to keep it going, yeah, but yeah. you don't do it for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing what I'm doing, whether you know, they watch they watch it or not, or, you know, I literally do it because I wanted to do it. And I want to find out, like on that podcast, for example, I want to find out these people's stories. It, inter it really, really interests me. And um, so you just got to keep on doing that, I guess. <laughs> so let me ask you a little bit of a technical question. I mean, I've seen on um, the early, G well, the early, uh, maybe, I don't know if they were earlier or later, but the GNL guitars, you know, when, Leo Fender went off and started his own company after he sold Fender. They came out with yeah. um, certain pickups that had sort of hex screws uh, in the pickups instead of a, mm. a, like a flat pole magnet where you can actually adjust the height of the pole individually. And yeah, I yeah. thought that was a great idea. I never tried one of those. But have you ever considered doing something like that on yours? Yeah. Yeah, no, I have. I mean, I don't... I've tried, I've tried it out, but I don't find the, I mean, there's, yes, there's little bits of, you know, changes in tone, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change it that much. Right. And also those pickups, it changes, it changes them instead of being like a traditional single coil, they're actually made like a P90. So those are those hex screws that that's the steel. And then there's the magnets underneath, which is going to give you a different sound. Um, and again, that goes back to the point earlier of people not, you know, people wanting something familiar, which, right, right. you know, but I think there's, 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 you know, there's a valid point to doing stuff like that. Um, and, but as you get to the, the adjustable things, you know, the, the screw sides on, on humbuckers and paths, that was that Seth Lover didn't design that. He was told to put it in by the Gibson marketing department <laughs> because it's, no, it's serious. It's because they said that, customers would want to fiddle with fiddle with stuff true, which true. you know we all like tinkering with things i mean I'm, I'm guilty myself i've yeah. broken and taken apart many a thing so my wife's nodding at me <laughs> <You agree>. um <laughs> you know that's it's so yeah it, it, it does change change it does it's, it's not necessary i don't think i like i like i think from a pickup point of view, if you can have the whole pickup itself, the whole coil and everything as close to the string as possible, then that's when you get the best result. That's why I love I love Alnico three as a magnet because it's actually it's actually a little bit weaker than the two, right? And it doesn't doesn't react as well as as doesn't affect the string as much because if right. you've got a really strong magnet but up to the string, what it does is it chokes it, right? And so the magnetic field is, is is stopping it moving as it should. Whereas if you have a weaker one, you can actually get the coil itself closer to it um before that starts happening and i for me that's one of the sort of the sweet spots if you look at like the old old burst for example though they they had really tall surrounds on them and they always set the pickups right like li just a little bit above those so they're really really close to the strings um and gives you gives you a great 
um, a great sort of response and stuff. Right. It's, uh, that's that's really cool. More more of an open sound, I guess. But um, yeah, more more dynamic, I'd say. Um, so the pickups that you've tried, like the you know, I'm sure you've you've come across some old pickups. What typically do they use in terms of magnets? Are they Alnico twos? Are they Alnico fours, fives? What what typically do they use? I it's I mean it's a bit of a cop out a cop, a cop out answer, but they use everything. I mean I don't think they like uh, what was it in like Bender the early strats were on eco three then they flipped to five and and in Gibson they they I mean nobody knows exactly but they kind of used whatever they were given. Sometimes they just couldn't get what they well, what what they wanted so they just used yeah. something else. Whatever was uh, but, available. And, yeah. Exactly, exactly. That's why you get so much variation, True. and that's and that's and that, I think that's a really good thing because then it means that we can really hone like as modern uh, pickup builders looking at everything, you know, uh, sort of seeing what's you know, we get to see what's good, bad, and ugly, you know, and what works and what doesn't. So then we can hone it down, and then over time, you know, it just gets better and better and better and better. And now. Because there's so many, there's so many people out there doing it, you know, which is brilliant. I think I really do believe that the more people that do this is 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 a good thing. Because um, you're getting everybody, everybody, everybody likes their like slight something slightly different, you know. Um, I've used this metaphor loads, and I most probably you told you it before, but it's this whole uh, spaghetti bolognese. Like pretty much everybody that cooks can make a spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. And you, everybody does it slightly differently because right. they like certain t certain flavors and things in yeah. it. Some people might put, I don't know, ketchup in it. <laughs> Some people might put capers in it, chili in it, whatever you know. Whatever, yeah. And you've got to find the person that makes the spaghetti bolognese that you like. You like. It might not be your mate Dave's. It might be you know your nan's or totally. or whatever. And you have just got to find the people that create the stuff that tastes or sounds or whatever. The way you like it and once you found that then you know that they make something a certain way Absolutely, and yeah. then and you'll be relatively safe with all their stuff that's maybe not all of it you can't please everybody and all that kind of thing but that's that's why it's it's a beautiful thing that there's so many people out there doing it. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the pickups that I that I that I rave about the the P90s that I that uh, that I tried from you, uh, if I'm hmm. not mistaken, those were um, I wrote down the specs. So I'll Nico five uh, yeah. scatter wound seven point two k and I'll Nico mm -hmm. two seven point seven k. Forty-two gauge wire, plain enamel. I was actually yeah. surprised that they were Alnico twos because uh, yeah. typically, lately, I've been gravitating towards the Alnico uh, fives just because they yeah. to be a little bit stronger. But the yeah. the mix in those two are great. I mean, I, I find the balance between the neck and the bridge pickup uh, so nice. I mean, it, one doesn't yeah. overpower the other and drown it out. So, and so many times. Mm -hmm you feel that, you know, the, the bridge is too bright and the, the neck is just too bassy. And sure, you can mm -hmm. dial them in a little bit with the height, but it's still overpowering. Where yours yeah. is really nicely blended in. I really like that a lot. So, um, yeah, thanks, man. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice combination. So tell me a little bit more about the other series because I'm not as familiar with, uh, you know, you have the original series, the Retro Wine, the Full Monty, the uh, Levithin, the mm -hmm. Turn Cat... Uh, the signature, uh, coats, yeah. Coats, sorry, yeah, the signature series. So yeah, yeah, you've been pretty busy. When do you get time to to make all these things? <laughs> it's so <funny. laughs> Do you know, lots of lots of the time. It's um, we get asked to make. I mean, some some of the times we get asked to make custom things, and they work out really well. Or you know, we just we you know we work a lot of hours. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's pure. It's purely yeah. that simple, but. Um, going through those ranges, we got the originals. They're they're copies of the, the yeah, but they they're kind of the best of that type that I've heard. So now we've got it's like a '68 Tele set, um, set, which is from which is a copy of a, a particular Telecaster that was in the studio where my old workshop was. Workshop number three was it was a shed out the back of a studio, and um, they had this refinned late placid blue 68 telly mm -hmm. which that era of in fen, fen, sort of vendors history is 
it's, it's, it's amazing because you get, obviously CBS has kind of taken over, but you still get oh, some of the old stock left over. So it was like a right. four bolt neck. It had like the sort of the slightly slanty tuners and all that kind of stuff, but it sounded amazing. Um, really, really good. The neck when it felt really good, everything was about it. So it's kind of recreating those. And then, so then the, the, the new move up, which is the, the retro wine series, that's taking these this vintage vintage voice pickups but kind of fixed so as i was saying earlier so it's like the, the, the telecaster set for example getting the neck a bit more snappy getting the bridge a little calming down though the so maybe slightly glassier highs that kind of thing um, to how so it's those vintage pickups kind of kind of fixed not well, not, not fixed that's not the right term but, but um, tweaked, my brain's a bit, yeah, a little my brain's bit. Not, yeah exactly my brain's not doing a good job of communicating at the minute and then the then you've got the full monty which is that same same kind of vibe but pushed harder um so it's sort of it's as hot as you can take a vintage voice if okay. that makes any sense Butter, yeah mm -hmm. and then we've got the yeah our new one which is the the leviathan which we're kind of delving into which is they're more aimed at gain like sort of high gain stuff things that can be really really pushed we worked with a guy called bill steer who was in like napalm death and he's in carcass and he's an amazing metal guitar player um so it's it is trying to get those kind of tones which you know it's really it's really easy to make a pickup that's really hot sure. but it's really it's um you can yeah you can make that relatively easy but then keeping the clarity and all the note definition exactly. whilst pummeling all that game. You know, so it's, that's, it's a new challenge, which we're, we're sort of early on the journey of that. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's that kind of thing. Have, and have then you, we, sorry for interrupting. Have you ever tried, uh, uh, the, the, the blade type pickups, you know, the single coil, yeah. in a, sort of a humbucker in a single coil. Do you have any? Yeah. 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 I, I've tr I've done a few custom ones mm -hmm. um, for people. They weren't really they were, were they were really specific in what they wanted. Um, it's just what it's one of those things that I haven't had the time to really investigate. Again, right. it's like uh, gold foils. I've mu I've messed around with them a little bit, but not nailed them down. Right. Um, I don't like sort of putting something out there that's like kind of half half you know half thought through. You know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. If you're putting something out, it's got to be good. Absolutely. So, so which I know this is going to be a, a kind of a, a trick question because it's almost like asking you who's your favorite child. But which pickup, <laughs> which pickup in your in your collection do you find uh, sounds the best to you? What do you like? Me, I I like the I'd, I have to say our retro wine Telecaster set is my favorite one. It's the one that I have in my sparkly silver um, guitar. Um, that married with a five way loom, so you've got your three positions but then you've also got the full series and then the other position is the bridge with part of the neck this makes makes a telecaster infinitely more versatile um that would be my go-to i think the guys the guys in the workshop always laugh at me because it's like as soon as we start anybody talks about telecaster pickups that's the one i talk about <laughs> and uh, they're like We've got other stuff. It sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Well, <laughs> but I, I get it. I mean, I'm the same. When I when I find something I like, I don't want to deviate because I don't want to risk it. You know, it's like uh, I finally found the, the the right recipe. You know, let's stick with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's kind. Of, I suppose. But that that then that then feeds back into why guitarists like everything as it was back in the day. You know, it all goes right because you know that that works and that yeah. produces a nice sound. And going outside of that, it's um. It's like I know people that go to restaurants and order the same thing every time. Yeah. So why don't you try something new? I mean, I'm fortunate enough. It's like when I go to an Indian restaurant or a Chinese restaurant, all of those kind of things, I never remember what I've eaten before because I, <laughs> so it's always, I, I, so, <laughs> so it's always new. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm memory like a sieve. <laughs> but I could imagine that. It, I mean, it would be kind of stressful. I would think, like you know, you finally, you know, you you create a pickup. It's great. People like it. They're buying it. And now you got to deviate from that, and you're like, okay, well, you know, am I going to be taking a step towards something that they're going to like more, or am I going to be moving backwards into something that they like less? When you finally are successful at something, you kind of want to stay within that, those boundaries, but you still want to produce something new. So it's 
yeah. kind of have to let go of the past, which is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it is. Um, but again, I think it goes back to the thing of just doing, if you do something that you like, it's like, uh, you know, comedians make, they do jokes that make, that they find funny. If it makes them laugh, then, you know, they'll, they'll keep it in and then, then road test it. But that's, that's the only way. If, if I used to, um, and I still do to a certain, a certain, a certain degree as kind of try, try and sort of analyze what people want. And every time I've, every time I've done that, whether it be, um, if I'm doing like a talk somewhere or, you know, with a product or, or, you know, something like that, it never goes as well as if I just do what I want to do. I'm not saying that what I do, but if, you know, what I want to do, and what I speak about is, is perfect for everybody, but it gets, I feel like I give a more honest, sure. bit, honest response. And, um, that's the only way you can do it. Absolutely. Really. So, so tell me a little bit, I noticed that you're also offering on your website now, you're offering, uh, courses. So I guess you're teaching people yeah. how to work on their guitars, and how's that working out for you? How's that? Working? That's good. I mean, obviously, COVID's put a bit of a yeah. bit of a downer on that one, but um, it's really good. We've had people lots. We've had I've done, run quite a few, and we're looking at doing because at the minute, because the workshop's quite small, um, you can have a maximum of the three people and, yeah. and me, and it uh, and we we can we do it we do it so i can actually teach people wherever they want we started it it was just like um you know how to learn how to fret dress and set up but you know people some one person comes in wants to learn how to do like wiring work on their soldering another you know another one wants to put a guitar together mm -hmm. learn how to balance bridges up right. properly all that kind of thing sure. so it's really it's 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 really good i like it's I, I, I like sort of helping people, you know, getting yeah, getting better at that stuff. It's really cool because it's not it's not rocket science. So you just have to just do it over and over and over. Yeah, really, um, that's the thing. I mean, I've had twenty yeah twenty years of doing fret dresses and setups and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm very used to it. But people get nervous about damaging the guitar, exactly. and and you know. And, you have to go quite far yeah. to then damage it. That's true. You know, it's yeah. you're not going to snap the truss rod, and if the truss rod will tell you before you snap it. It'll literally you'll go creak, creak, creak. That's right. Um, and you know, it's, and you can as long as with when you're setting up stuff, as long as you take note of what you do. So, like, take the truss rod for example. You take you do it in measured amounts. So you do like an eighth of a turn. And then test it, the eighth, you know, like that, and make a note of what you've done. Then you can always take it back, you know. And it's sort of giving people the confidence to kind of do that stuff. Um, which is, always, yeah, it's really good fun. I always, I, I, I remember when I had the aha moment. Where I, 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 I remember when I was younger. And I was like, you know, I can, I can probably do this, you know. So, uh, you know, slowly you jump in and you, you get a little bit more confident and a little bit more confident, and before you know it. You can pretty much do it all. And then when you realize that you can do that, it's like the setup on the guitar, the guitars just feel so much better because everything is mm. playing the way it should. So mm. I, I strongly believe everybody should, to a certain degree, be able to work on their instruments. I mean, there's obviously yeah. things that are, I wouldn't do a, you know, a refret because I don't have the yeah. equipment to do it. And it's, you know, you have to know what you're doing, but, uh, you know. Definitely, just general setup, you know, string height and bridge setup and intonation and stuff. Definitely mm. should be able to handle that if you're a guitarist. I, yeah. Uh, so that's think, great. It's really great that you're doing that. Yeah, man. It's cool. We're looking into doing bigger sort of bigger events. So because at the minute it has, it's you know, it's it's not cheap. It's like three three four hundred quid for a day. Yeah. Um, but then if we can do bigger bigger things we won't be as personal but um it makes it more affordable for people um we've also done a couple of ones over things like zoom and skype and facetime and that kind of stuff um and you know we always offer support say if someone's bought some pickups they're having trouble fitting them literally you will do a you know, can't do it all the time but as when we can we'll do i'll sit down with them over some form of internet thing yeah. and talk them through what they're doing yeah. you know yeah yeah you want I, I just want people to you know get the sound they want that's Absolutely. that's yeah. literally it pure, pure and simple get the sound they want and enjoy playing their guitar and Absolutely. that's the two things that i think i'm all right at <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. well one of the things that, that kind of uh 
for me, in, in terms of getting back to pickups specifically, uh, as a, a person that likes to hack around with, with the guitars and everything, um, I remember thinking like, uh, I remember when I realized that you can't just put any pickup combination together. Uh, and, you know, let's say you buy a pickup and you want to replace your bridge pickup and you put it in there. If the polarity is not the same, you're, you're basically mm. going out of phase and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's something that a lot of people still don't realize that, uh, you know, yeah. they're just buying a pickup, putting it in there. And then it's like, it doesn't doesn't sound good, you know, and they, mm. they think it's a bad pickup or it's not the right pickup that they chose. But actually, it's because yeah. they're, they're putting them together with another pickup that is not the same polarity or, or the same polarity. Mm. So what would you suggest? Any tips on that? I mean, um, any can you can can you rewire pickups that are the same? Let's say uh, you you have a, a two sets of south face, facing humbuckers, and uh, yeah. So the stuff that's out of phase. I mean, it's really easy to flip the phase of, of of pickups. I mean, on single coils like strats, uh, strats are super easy. You literally just flip the the black and the the white or black, whatever the colors are, right. flip them over, right. or uh, you can you can change the magnetic polarity by running running the pickup through two stronger magnets. So mm -hmm. you can literally turn a north facing one to a south facing one, mm -hmm. etc. So there's that to do. Humbuckers are a little bit more tricky. Um, traditional humbuckers, sorry, because the they've the wire has got the out the outer braid is the earth, and right. then and then you've got the inner core. If you just turn that over, so you you attach attach the braided call to call it, the braided part of the wire to yeah. the, the output etc yeah um it'll be fine until you touch it and then it will go to ground and it will just the sound will cut out and that kind of stuff um but if you've got four conductor wire which is if you if, i always suggest to people if they're buying just one humbucker to go with another set always get four conductor because then you can do whatever you want with it you can right. flip it around do right. all that kind of stuff More totally you don't get any, there's no difference Mm -hmm. um lots of people you know myself included you know you, you like to, if you're if you're doing a you know you want everything to be as it was um they can't get their heads around not having the braided cable but it's it's pretty you know if you four conductors is the way forward if you're if you're in doubt yeah. but the other way to do it is to if the if there's no cover on it you can like slide the bar magnet out flip it over and stub it back in right um that's relatively easy on paths because they're not potted but anything that's potted you've got the wax to deal with and all that exactly. kind of stuff got to and then first yeah but exactly but if you do that i mean if you flip the magnet bar then you don't mm -hmm. have to you don't have to flip the the actual cable uh, the actual yeah. uh, connectors so that's an no. easier an easier way to do it if it's uh if you're looking at doing something yeah. like that so i have a i have a strat that has a i think a a, a set of 52 pickups in it that were wound to be like traditional so the center pickup is not reverse wound yeah so um what can i do in that situation is there anything i can do to get that uh humbucking uh can i re reverse the wires in that situation reversing the wires won't do it because right. um what you need you need the well, you have to reverse the wires and reverse the polarity okay. of the the magnetic polarity, right. which again is really simple. You, you, if you've got a rare earth, a couple of rare earth magnets, just run the pickup through that, and that will flip the magnetic polarity, and then flip the wires yeah. over. Because what you'll do to get rid of the hum, to get like that, so the way that works is that any any electric electrical device like main there's anything like a lamp or a computer or something like that the transformers uh, they're spitting out this like this 50 60 cycle hum mm -hmm. that then the pickups pick up because they're seeing this this thing the and um, what you do is when you flip the the actual the sort of the electrical phase of the pickup that flips everything so it's out of phase so your signal will so if you imagine your signals going like this and then you've got the hum which is like going through the middle of it like that it flips everything so it's out of phase so the signal is the signals cut out and the hums cut out and then if you flip the magnetic polarity that affects your signal but does not affect the the the, the noise 
harm stuff that's getting spat out of the transformers and other bits. So that's that case, your signal gets flipped back into phase, but the harm doesn't. So that's out of phase. Um, it, it's quite it's quite a clever little trick. <laughs> you see, the, so there's still there's still things I could learn after all these years. <laughs> there's still things I could learn. Do that, man. <laughs> I'll try that. I'll try that when I feel uh, confident enough to give it a shot. Um, yeah. So tell me a little. Tell me a little bit about the custom work that you're doing. You you also build custom guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a big thing we've pushed really. Um, we do it when people ask us. But yeah, I mean, it's we we're not do doing. It's not sort of built from the ground up. We we got. I've got guys that I've known for a long time that make really good bodies and necks and things like that. So we kind of curate a build basically. Um, it's like growing up Lego, <laughs> oh, absolutely. but but yeah, we do loads of stuff I've, and lots of lots of things with sparkles in. <laughs> Purple guitars and sparkly guitars, right? <laughs> yeah, man, I love it. I love a sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the craziest thing that you've been asked to do? Is anything like really far out there, or uh, it's pretty tame? It, it's it's relatively tame. I mean, it's mainly the, the weirdness comes in in the colours because we. I mean, if you look at on our on our Instagram, lots of stuff. There's lots of pink and turquoise and sparkly stuff and all that kind of thing. Um, so there's lots of that. Um, I mean, crazy things that I've been asked to do over time. I there's a guy. Um, there was a band in the UK called Irby and and Irby and the Whale, Noah and the Whale, and the bass player from that now does his own thing, and uh, he's got he's got like an old uh gibson dove acoustic which he wanted me to put a what pickup is it in there like a hum i can't remember if it's a humbucker or something like that so i had to route the top a hole in the top re take the in the end we had to take the back off reinforce all of the struts in this in the the top um and then because we because where the pickup had to go was right through the x brace so we had to sort that all out put it all back together do that and then that was pretty mental and the same guy he's got a gretch Vi viking i think it is but i had i wrote it's his nickname for the guitar was thor and i had to engrave thor <laughs> and in do an inlay on, right, on it and right. put a middle pickup on it and a load of other switching stuff um but he he's one of those guys that he's you know he's he they're they're tools to him you know sure. and they he loves them like like his children but but um they have to do what he needs them to do and he yeah he's done that. he's a he's a crazy boy have you ever talked have you ever tried to talk somebody out of something i mean you know somebody comes with you with a not really nice vintage guitar with a crazy idea and you're like no don't do that <laughs> yeah no I, I i try to advise people um as best i can mm -hmm. i've talked myself out uh, talk people out of buying the biggest thing I think that people do is they don't realize how much the setup of the guitar, just the balancing affects the way it feels and sounds. Right. So lots of the time people will come in and they'll be, I've got this strap um, or whatever, insert guitar. Um, I don't really like it. I want new pickups, new tuners, new bridge, new this, new this, new this, new this. And then like talking about, you know, well over a thousand pounds worth, 2000 pounds worth of stuff. And I, <laughs> I mean, I, my accountant would be kicking me, but I, I said, look, but before we do any of that and you spunk all this money, let's set it up first, get it playing as it should do, and then make the decision. And also change one thing at a time. Right. Don't, don't change everything because then you need to know what works and what doesn't work. Good advice, yeah. So let's, take, let's take our time over it and we'll work together and get it to where you need to be. Nine times out of 10, set it up, then they're that they're, they're pretty that's pretty much it you know then maybe a loom and pickups maybe or but but that's it. it's really it's really simple get you get your guitar set up and speaking as it should um yeah my account if my accountant listens to this he's we gonna won't give tell it right. we, we won't tell <laughs> <laughs> are there any chances that you're gonna you're gonna evolve into other aspects of uh of guitars maybe amps or pedals or, yeah. or that type of thing I, I made a decision a few years ago to run with any crazy idea i have and there's lots of those so 
we're going to try stuff we you know some might might work hopefully some won't um but yeah i, I think you just got to try everything again it's, it goes back to what we were talking about right at the beginning you, how do you keep loving what you do and you just get you got to learn and venture forth absolutely there's always going to be something new over the horizon it's just that you have to uh not be scared to try it and grab it and, and see where it goes. I mean, uh, 100%. You, obviously yeah. you've done a really good job so far. You've been around for a long time and you know, the words are, the words getting out there. You're making ripples for sure, because I hear people mentioning your pickups, uh, uh very often actually. And so, uh, every time I hear them talking about your pickups, I'm like, yeah, you know, that's, that, that's <laughs> the guy I agree, you know, check him out. So that's yeah, really, yeah. that's really great. So, Anything that you have on your on your uh, your drawing board at the moment that's not complete that you can give us a preview for or uh... what's going on? There's we've got got a couple of pedals that we're working on. There's one that's um, like a big muff style thing, but with a couple of couple of tweaks. There's I'm mean, because I'm kind of learning how to do it, it you, learning how to. I mean, it was, I went right back to the beginning of learning how to properly read a schematic and stuff and learning how it all works. Um, so we're, but that's what we're working on. There's, we, I've got like a, a fuzz face circuit, which we've done. And then you press one, you press a button and it kind of implodes. It's really, it sounds like, it sounds, it sounds really cool. Um, yeah, there's loads of there's there's a cool tremolo that then feeds into another pet. Is like a two pedals in one thing. We've been working on that. There's a tremolo then in, in uh, that then that feeds something else, which is that's pretty special. So it looks so, like yeah. there's no lack of ideas uh, at your place. That's really great. Yeah, this is this is the problem. This is why I end up working all hours and you know and, and as soon as I sit down and have time to do anything, it's like you know. You just need three, three more guys like you so that you can uh, work on all those ideas. <laughs> my, idea, my life is not, 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 would not cope with three more like me. <laughs> I need people I've got, but, you know, I'm really, I'm really, really fortunate to have people that, you know, I really trust to tell me to, to sh shut the hell up or <laughs> slow the hell down, you know, and you need, you need people like that. Cause otherwise <laughs> I, I mean, Monty's wouldn't, if it was just me, yeah nothing would get done <laughs> well you know what it's a good problem to have to to be uh i guess you know spread thin it means you have a lot of stuff that you're working on the last time we spoke uh, on the video that i wasn't able to air you were talking about your uh, guitar food products oh yeah, yeah yeah which are which is pretty cool maybe you want to tell the people about that so uh so yeah so what we're talking uh... about it's something I developed over time, over quite a while. Well. It's called instrument food, and it's, a, food, it's yeah. a, a conditioning, a wood conditioning wax. Um, it's all made. It's all natural ingredients and everything. You wouldn't want to eat it, but it's safe enough to. Um, and that, what that does is it seals the moist, seals the moist into the into the neck. I had, I did a test on uh, a rosewood neck that we had in, and we had lemon just lemon oil on one side on like the first sort of six frets and then put the wax on as, as well and left it there and after six months the the lemon oil was dry as old boots but the the wax was still still really rich it makes it makes the, the wood look really nice if you if the boards may be a bit on the pale sides it's good for that um it, it works really nicely on the back of bare woods necks, you know, like the relics and stuff. You buff it into that. It just seals it, gives it a really nice feel. Um, and we actually we just finished another one, which is it's in, it's basically fundamentally it's the same thing, but it's got a it's, it's got, you can put dyes into it, so you can, especially with uh, had a few people talk about wanting you know, well to darken the rosewood even more, right, or with all these new sort of rosewood replacement woods, um, they want them to, some of them are quite bright. Right. So they want them to dull it down. So right. it's literally looking at that kind of thing. So that's, that's gonna, we haven't haven't got a name for it yet that's, that I can actually say within earshot of my kids, but it's, um, it's yeah, that's, that's quite a cool thing. It is, um, it is. I think that's, uh, that's something I was talking to somebody about recently too. You're right. Uh, the mm. new guitars, since you, they're moving away from rosewood and they're going with, um, you know, all, all these different types of woods that are kind of 
rosewood-ish, but not really the same color. That would mm. be a, gr a great thing, yeah, for people that just want to darken it, darken it down just a little bit. Uh, I could see that yeah. being quite popular. Yeah, I mean the um, the instrument food does it a bit, but this kind of takes it the next One stage further, further, which is cool. Really, so, yeah. really cool. So, uh, well, look, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, I yes, know you're super busy and have so many things to do, so. Uh, I want to. I want to wish you nothing but uh, the best of success with your products and guitar workshops and everything else that you're working on. Wicked. Uh, I, I think, uh, from what I see, I mean, you um, you have what it takes. You have uh, the persistence. You have the passion, and you have uh, really good recipes for great sounding pickups. So there's no reason why uh, the future won't be bright for you and your company. So. Do you want to tell people how to, how to get to you? I mean, uh, if people are local, where can they find you? If they want to pick up your your pickups, maybe you want to tell them the website where you can get that. Uh, you can order them directly. Yeah, well, if you, if you, uh, I mean, if, if you're in London, we're in we're in Acton, which is West London. Um, the website address is just it's montysguitars.com. You'll find us all, all the stuff there. You can find us on. Facebook, just again, Monty's Guitars, yep. Instagram, yep. Twitter, although I don't tweet that much. But yeah, not on TikTok yet, not that cool. <laughs> Do you sell uh, your products on uh, Reverb or directly only? No, no, it's di it's direct. You can get them through various stores like, you know, Anderton's in the UK and a few other places, but m most of it's direct. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, again, thank you very much. You're very... Uh, humble and uh, likable guy that really has uh, a great thing going i hope it uh, lasts for another 25 years at least <laughs> yeah me too man that'd be cool and i'm gonna send you an email uh, very soon and i'm gonna put place an order for another set of those pickups because i really want to uh, upgrade my um my prs i have this uh, prs that i really love but the pickups i don't know what it is about prs they make fantastic guitars but the pickups are like eh. They're not, yeah, you can't do it all. <laughs> no, you can't do it all. It's an earlier model, and I think they've gotten better now with the pickups, but um, I think the earlier models, they were trying a lot of different things, and for some reason, they, they're they just not there for me. Uh, they're not they're not what I was looking for, so uh, I think your pickups will uh, will make that guitar shine again. So uh, looking forward to putting that. Oh, yeah, look, look forward to doing that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, get back to work, because I know you got a lot of stuff to do. Wind some more pickups, because... We we'll need do. you. Yes, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great afternoon. And uh, well, afternoon for me, evening for you. And uh, we'll talk again soon, I hope. Wicked Tony. Take care, man. All right. Thanks a lot.